On this episode, Christian knows how to fix the cobblestones. <laughs> I don't know how I will do this. Is it works immediately. I maybe should have tested this. And then we bring out the normal person spreadsheets. <laughs> Hear me out. Hi everybody, hi, welcome. This is Christian from Lazy Devs, and this is the advanced shmup tutorial. That's right. So we are working, we are kind of solving one of the one of the quintessential, one of the big ancient problems of Pico 8, which is I call cobblestoning, where it's like when you're moving diagonally. Uh, blah, 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 <laughs> you know, your sprites get all shaked up, all bumpy and shaky. Diagonals are just not, don't seem to work well in Pico 8. And we discussed in a previous episode why that is. We set, rewrote, <laughs> we did some serious rewrite. I kind of got away from it. It looks, it looks like crazy stuff. <laughs> but yeah, we are um, we're doing like the system where we can extract the button presses from uh, the BTN function and using a bunch of arrays, we translate them into a single number, which allows us to quickly, you know, simplifies our movement code, but also allows us to quickly recognize when we're moving diagonally without kind of like complicated if statements. I know this was a bit complicated, but I think this sets us up in a good direction. You're gonna see why. This solves a lot of problems at the same time, and now we're gonna get the payoff. Okay, all right, so if you did the, the doggy zone, then you know that today we are gonna deal with the cobblestoning. Hopefully you already solved this problem yourself. I'm actually, I haven't. <laughs> I don't know how I will do this is, this is new grounds, new grounds, baby. It's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine, don't worry. Don't you worry about a thing. So what were I, st what, were, what was I thinking? Uh, one thing I want to do is maybe something like Last deer, I want to save um, the position that we are traveling, um, the direction that we are traveling in last time. Uh, that's something I want to. I'm going to save. So at the end of our update function, I'm going to go last deer equals deer. Okay, um, and then we're going to say something like if last deer is not equals deer. So if the direction at which we are traveling has changed and uh, deer is greater equals five and we're going diagonally, then <clears throat> and tie co cobblestone. This is where we're gonna end. <laughs> Execute our anti cobblestone tech. Let me explain you what I what what's my what my 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 my, uh, my idea is. All right, here is our grid again, and I already explained last time around. The problem is that when we are in a center pixel, then cobblestoning is not a problem um, because we are going you know perfectly across the pixels, hitting the corners like it's a DVD logo. <laughs> um, so that's that's good. That's 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 something that we want. We want to be on this line. Let me let me let me let me give you this line. Okay, so we want to be on this line. Mm -hmm. That's good. But the question is, like, what happens if we are not on this line? What happens if we are here? And then we want to get on this line. Well, something I want to do then it is to get us on this line because if we are along this line, everything will be fine. Yeah. So how are we going to get on this diagonal? <laughs> okay. Let me let me. I'm not sure myself, to be honest. I, I, this is this is a bit scary. <laughs> this is, I maybe should have tested this. <laughs> maybe somebody has a really good cobblestoning effect that I would just steal. Okay, there is a quick and dirty solution, and maybe that's going to be enough. Is that going to be enough? That's going to be crazy if that's enough. So, what if we just reset our subpixel position to the center of the screen, uh, to the center of the pixel? So we're just going to say like, okay. Because if we saw that if we start in the center of the pixel and going diagonally from there, there is no cobblestoning because we hit perfectly the diagonals, right? So what if we're just gonna say px equals floor px plus 0 0.5. And same with y. 
Is that going to be enough? It looks fine. Let's see if we're going to remove the clear screen function. Anti cobblestoning, baby! Yeah! Perfect diagonals, even with comma value, with comma value speeds. That easy, baby. We should have done it last episode. I was, I was, <laughs> I was just like felt trepidation. And yeah, it locks, works with uh, fast movement um, comma values. Now, obviously, now we're skipping a bunch of pixels because we're going faster than just one pixel. But yeah. Just works. Now, because we're always resetting to the center of the pixel, there might be some situations but now and then, you know, where the speed is not quite as consistent, but I don't think, you know, a 0.5 pixel movement is something that people will notice. And if we ever feel like it's something is wrong, well, then we're gonna have to come back to this. But yeah, that was easy. If you have a cooler, better solution for this, then do let me know. I The reason why I, put it off to the next episode is because I like my initial thoughts were like <laughs> like stripping off the y value and then calculating you know where we are within subpixel uh, on the x value and setting that to the y value like like aligning x and y depending on which direction you're going but uh, yeah just resetting the center of the pixel is such a easier solution for this problem okay so that's good that's all about the cobblestone value, uh, cobblestone problem. Now let us address the other problem, and that is um, we can get rid of this now. I think we can. We just don't need this now. Let us address this thing, which is normalized diagonals. How do we do normalized diagonals? Well, it just so happens that we actually have a tool for this now. So you can see dear x and dear y. Yeah, we can just change those ones into 0 0.7, which is kind of like the number that you need for normalized diagonals. And then you're just going to get normalized diagonals. So something like this. Just changing all of those ones into 0 0.7s. And you know, it's 0 0.071, I think that was the real number, right? Yeah, 0 0.07 is um, is the correct value, the mathematically correct value. But I actually heard some people making the argument that 0 0.75 is actually probably a better value. It's not mathematically correct, uh, normalized diagonal. It is slightly faster on diagonals, but it will look smoother. And I, I want to try out. First of all, let me, let's just see what, what 0 0.7 looks like if that's, that even works. Uh, again, just checking if we are, if, if this looks good, this seems to be looking good. It'll give me a, like, like a real big speed, something like, I don't know, three, four, let's go four. Okay, I don't really see the difference. Um, so let me go from the P set solution to the actual sprite solution. Let me bring out, bring back the sprite. Uh, let me uh, go this, uh, use the speed sound down to one, just like two and one. This looks smooth for sure. There is no cobblestoning happening. So let me see. Yeah, definitely I can feel that it takes a longer time going diagonally across the stream than just going like this. I'm pretty sure this is the case. Now let us try 0 0.5. Is, is that, does that feel better? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, cobblestoning. We're cobblestoning. Why? Yeah, definitely cobblestoning here. Interesting. Why? 
Oh, maybe we're encountering some kind of rounding error. That's possible because we're going exactly a speed of one. So what if we go like 0 0.1? Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> it was a rounding error. Interesting. If you multiply 0 0.75 with three, uh, with four, four times, you will get exactly three. But because Pico 8 is sometimes a bit unprecise, you might get like a rounding error there and then it would start cobblestone again. So you want to make sure that you actually don't hit uh, the, um, the perfect integer values um, to avoid those rounding errors. Now it looks fine. So you want to make sure that there is no cobblestone. Treacherous, treacherous, treacherous game. Cool, 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 cool. Good, so now we can move on to the next question, which is, and let us like make the basic movement feel nice. We kind of did this. Uh, this is crossed off. Let, let's let's, uh, let's cross, normalize the diagonals is crossed off. We're gonna keep it at 0.7, I think that's okay. Uh, basic, make basic movement feel nice. Well, let's break this apart into different tasks. We kind of did cobbles, fixed cobblestoning, we did that. The next question is is what we what we need to find out is what is a good movement speed? And the question after that is also um, we also want to or it's not a question it's a task but you know uh, task do banking. Uh, right now the the movement looks a bit stiff because there's no animation on the ship and I actually want to also implement the banking. Let us tackle maybe the movement speed first because that's actually an interesting question. Yep, here we are. We're putting on the big boy pants again. We're taking out the spreadsheets. We're actually doing the research, looking at the data. That's right. Um, so here's a bunch of schmups that I looked at. And I tried to figure out you know, what speeds are those schmups moving their ships at. And this seems like an easy question to answer, but it's not. The reason why it's kind of difficult to compare different shmups with each other is that each shmup has a different resolution. So it's kind of difficult to compare them to each other because, you know, like let's say Raiden, for example, has this resolution. It's 192 pixels in width. Just 192? This means that it has more pixels than Pico 8. And then so if it's moving one pixel per frame, let's say, that's not the same as moving one pixel per frame Pico 8. That's kind of like a different, because pixels in Pico 8 are thicker, bigger. So it's kind of difficult to translate one speed to another. Now, one easy way that I've kind of found, that's kind of like a, maybe a good way to solve this problem is to just measure at 60 frames per second, how many frames it takes to cross the entire screen how many frames it takes to cross the entire screen. I'm starting at the left edge, I recorded the video. I started on the left edge, pressed the right button, went all the way to the right edge when the ship stopped moving, and then I went into an editing program, measured the amount of frames it took me to complete that movement, and put it in here in this table. So you see kind of like different, different values. And something I also measured is how, how big uh, the slowdown is affecting the, the, the individual ships. So in the Rampachi, ship A is moving. It takes uh, 76 frames to cross the, the screen. Sorry, it just sucks. But uh, when we're slowing down, it takes 176 frames to cross the screen. So you can see like, like how much the focus fire is affecting the speed. That's something that's gonna be maybe interesting later on. Something that I also calculated here, that's kind of like very convenient, is I calculated Pico 8 equivalent. <laughs> I know, crazy. <laughs> Hear me out. So a Pico 8 equivalent means that I just, you know, basically calculated like assuming the screen that it's, it's crossing, assuming that screen is exactly 128 pixels, how many pixels per frame would we have to move in order to cross 128 pixels during this time? And it's not quite exact. And that's why I'm actually working not with 128 pixels, but 112 pixels, because you have to also keep in mind that the ship itself has a certain width. So I'm actually subtracted a bunch of pixels. That kind of felt more in line. It's not, you know, it's not exact science. Uh, and it's also like, I'm not saying like we should copy other shmups, like this is the right value and we should copy those values and put it in there. I just want to see kind of the differences. Like I just want to have something, translate what I, my gut feeling into actual numbers, analyze them a little bit. 
and to see if I am in the right ballpark. Where am I with my Pico 8 in, along this table? What kind of game are I getting close to? One game that is actually really interesting for me is GDLS 3. That game has kind of like almost exactly 1.5. That's kind of like good speed. It's an interesting speed. I like that. And then, interestingly, it's kind of like also very close to Dodon Party, the Dodon Party ship. That's also interesting. You can also see that Raiden is super slow. Old school shmup, you know, those those games were like, this is a sluggish ship, 0 0.68. You can see that generally 1.5, around 1.5 seems like a common value sometimes. Sometimes they are slower ships, sometimes they're faster ships. But you know, they are kind of hovering around the 1.5. 1.5 seems nice. Now, that, if that works for those games, that doesn't necessarily mean that it works for our games. It really depends on all the kind of challenges that you're being offered. And as you can see with Raiden, you know, you can go just com completely different direction if you want to have a different experience. Uh, but it's nice to have those values in here. And I think it's a good idea if we maybe expand this database with more data points. So if you can measure these things yourself, do let me know in the comments section or in the Discord, we have a dedicated Schwab channel. It would be great to have some other measurements from other, uh, other uh, Schmups to have just like count how many frames in 60 frames per second it takes to cross horizontally the entire screen, okay? Okay, so let us apply what we've just learned. Let us apply what we've learned to what we have on the screen. Let's just go 1.5. Let's just go with the classic 1.5. Looks a bit jittery sometimes. Let's go 1.4. Still a bit jittery. I'm not sure why it's looking so jittery. Maybe it might be might be another rounding error. Let us let us um, trace the the path. It's just like some, my my eyes. Yeah, you see sometimes there's a jump happening here. Yeah, that's a, that's that's a rounding error. Like, not a rounding error, but you know, most of the time uh, the ship is moving at a one. The ship is moving at one pixel per per frame, and every now and then it jumps a pixel because we're not exactly traveling at the same at the at the perfect diagonal speed, and that's why you sometimes getting a bit of a jittery movement. So this may be something where we might tweak those values a little bit. Oh yeah, right. We still have seven zero point seven five here. Okay, so let's just go to zero point seven. Maybe that will help us. Just getting slightly more regular movements. Oh yeah, this, this looks really nice. Okay, let us go back to... Yeah, now the diagonal movements are more... Sometimes there's a bit of a stutter. But this, this feels good. You're not gonna get like a perfect movement here because again, like it's, it's just like, what can you do, right? But yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay, good. So around speed 1.4 is something that I think is maybe a good, something that feels okay, a bit slower, but not by much and, and looks nice and, and, and smooth, I th I'd say. Uh, if you want to experiment with your own values, go ahead and let me know what feels right to you. I think this is something that we just really have to brainstorm a little bit and see you know, what other people think about. But I think this is, I'm gonna stick to 1.4. Okay, so we did this as well. I'm gonna go like, maybe like this, X. <laughs> okay, now next up, let's do the banking animation. This is actually, this is actually a really funny thing. We, um, we had that, previously we had that in uh, Doggy Zone challenges and people were so often struggling with this thing. So I'm sorry about that. Okay, so this is basically an animation that we're going through. By the way, um, I, I deliberately made it an animation now into multiple frames because previously we just had like, you know, straight and left and right. Um, but uh, this time I made like an in-between frame, which costs us quite a lot of sprite space. You can see that we, this is just like this whole chunk of, of sprite sheet space. It's just gone because we, we just have a spaceship because we have a jet. That's a lot. 
and we have to think about whether that's worth it or how we can maybe compress it. But for now, let's just keep it around. Hey, here's Christian from the future. So Christian from the past at some point uh, promised you that we're going to talk about the banking sprite. And we kind of forgot about this. So here I am in the future uh, fixing that. So I already talked about how I created this specific sprite, um, you know, how the bubble cockpit is such an important feature. Uh, something that I'm um, thinking about is kind of like the hitbox, the collision box, where that is on the sprite. Um, this sprite is kind of like not really convenient for this because we do have the big cockpit. So you would think that maybe the cockpit would be the collision box, but it's kind of like not really centered at, at the sprite. Uh, it's kind of very far away from the sprite, offset a little bit. And it is also a little bit too big. We want our collision box to be a, a lot smaller. So what I figured out is then maybe like this this black area, this dark area, kind of like this section here. Oops, uh, that's a little bit too big of a sprite. Uh, that this area, um, this spot here, that's going to be our collision box, which kind of like still is visually somehow anchored to the sprite. We kind of think of maybe as to where the pilot is sitting as being our collision box. Now this presents a little bit of a challenge for, for the banking animation because when the banking is happening, you can see that the cockpit, well, if the cockpit was kind of sitting on top of their airplane, the cockpit would have to move left and right when the, when the airplane is banking. Um, and that would also shift kind of like the position of where the pilot is visually. You would have the pilot sitting maybe you know, around here or so. So when I was drawing this cockpit, I was actually drawing multiple versions of this banking animation. And I want to make sure that the cockpit is kind of like recessed into the fuselage so um, so that it doesn't actually change the position when you when it when it banks. It's kind of like the entire airplane banks uh, around uh, the cockpit. So you can see like visually the cockpit is kind of like in the same spot. Kind of. of obviously, there is a bit of an offset here. Like this is not completely symmetrical. But like this section here, that's kind of like the collision box. That remains... remains um, remains at the same spot. Uh, or I, I guess like this is the collision box, this section here, right? So that's kind of like still visible in this state. And it's still it's still kind of there here in this state, right? So this was kind of like very important to me that that uh, it's definitely it's not moving laterally. It's not like, you know, moving to the side or anything like this. this so this was a big deal. And I was very focusing on, on this that um, you don't get like these problems with some games. You have like very elaborate character animations. For example, a good example for that is um, Esperade, which has very elaborate character animations, which is really great, um, but also makes it incredibly ambiguous where the hitbox is, and which causes lots of troubles. So I want to avoid this, and especially in this kind of game where the pixels are so large, where even a single pixel can make such a big difference. So yeah, this was one of the things I was thinking about when I created the banking animation. Uh, the other concern was kind of like just um, thinking about how many frames we have. Um, the amount of frames we have right now is a little bit of a, a, um, overkill. Um, I think just like like one frame, like we had in a basic shmup showcase, might have been just enough. And we might revert to that version eventually when we really need the sprite space. Uh, but also kind of like, it, 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 you know, we, you're banking so much during the game. This is just such an animation that will play so much so often adding this little flourish here um, will pay off because you will see that animation so many times um, so I decided to kind of like uh, do an extra here do an extra frame in here um, in order to make this fear a bit more um, you know elaborate a little more sophisticated we're gonna see if we maybe need that extra space and we can always drop that um, that additional those two additional frames here um, but I think so far it looks pretty nice also, shout outs to the people who think that this uh, this looks a little bit like an astronaut flipping the bird, you know, like this. These are like their hands and this is their, their helmet. Uh, totally see it now. Didn't see it when I created it. Not intentional, but not necessarily bad. So we have five animations frame. Let's put them in, in an array. Ship SPR. Let's just call it like this. Ship SPR. Uh, let's put them in an array. One, two, uh, one, three, five, seven. Okay. One, three, five, seven, nine, I think is the final one, right? Nine, okay. So here, where we're drawing a ship, uh, let us, well, let's, let's go, let's call this ship, ship R, let's just call it ship R, ship array. And then we're gonna go have a ship SPR, and we're gonna set it to five. Uh, let me think about this. We are going to set it to actually to three. And here's how, how this will work. 
whenever we're drawing a sprite of the ship, we're not drawing just like a number, but we're actually gonna address this array. So we're gonna go like ship R, square brackets, ship spur. I'm gonna actually floor the ship spur. So let me, let me, uh, right now this should just like, okay, nothing changed because um, the ship spur, this variable is set to three. So it will pick always the third value from our little banking animation array. So it will just always just dump five. It will just always, this whole statement will just always just dump five into the sprite function. Now, when we're going left and right, we want to change, we want to move this ship spur value left or right. Actually, I'm going to set it to uh, 3.5. We're going to see why in a second. Okay, so uh, how are we going to do this? Well, now we don't really have a good test whether we're pressing left or right. So that's kind of like difficult, but actually there's a good test here that we can apply, which is if, um, and we maybe should put these things in a, in, a, in a variable, but let's go like, so if dear x dear, let's put it in here inside this statement. Um, is smaller than zero, then we're going left, else we're going right, and oh, else, and we could also technically maybe going straight. So we're going to go else if uh, is greater than zero, then we're going right, and else is uh, we're not going to do anything. Now, we want to, an animation to play out towards a target value, right? So we just want to have a, tar a variable that remembers which target value the animation should go towards. Um, but you know what, let me just like set it straight to whatever I want it to be. So let's just go something like um, ship, ship spur. If we're going left, I want ship spur to be one. If we're going right, I want ship spur to be five. And otherwise, I'm going to ship spur to be 3.5. And if we are not moving at all, then we want to ship spur to be 3.5. This is kind of like a default value. Oops. Ah, there's a then missing here. Okay, so now we have banking. The banking is really fast because we, there's just no animation happening. We just like snap to, uh, to left or right. And it kind of actually looks okay, I would say. That's maybe, maybe, maybe we actually don't need all them in between frames. Maybe that's fine. But just in case, we're just gonna add you know, the in between frames as well. So, but now we just don't want it to snap. We want to show the in between frames for at least a while. So how do we do that? Well, something we can do is we can do something like local, um, um, let's call it D ship spur. So that is the destination ship sprite. The, what the ship sprite in the end when the animation is finished should be at in the end. And that is going to be, uh, the default is going to be 3.5. 3 the ship spur is going to be default 3.5. If we're going left, we're going to set it to 1. If we're going right, we're going to set it to 5. And actually not 5, but 5.95. We're going to see why in a sec. Um, and then we can actually really get rid of this one because that's already kind of like default. We don't need to, we don't need to ch change the D ship spur from the default value if there's no movement happening, okay? And then we can do like a statement here. If um, ship spur is smaller than D ship spur, then else. This is kind of like a complicated way of doing this. We're going to find a better way of doing this, but we're going to go like um, ship spur uh, plus, let's, let's, let's move it around so it's maybe, so if, if, the ship, if the destination is smaller than what it should be, then we're going to subtract something from like 0 0.1 and then uh, else if this then the signs are changed, then we're gonna add something to this. This is not great. This is not efficient. We're gonna efficientize it 
in a second, but let's just make sure that this animation works. Yeah, you can see the banking. Something weird happens here. <laughs> we don't like what happens there. Uh, what happens there? But we have nice and smooth banking. That's cool. Um, let us debug this. Let's just print, print the ship spur. Ship spur. Uh, let us print it on uh, 23. And we don't need that diagonal check anymore. So 3.5. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, see, it overshoots. What the problem we're having is overshoots. It's it hits the um, the target value is um, the target value is set to one, uh, but it kind of overshoots the one and it gets into into less than one, and then we're gonna get a, we're trying to address a value that's no longer then there. It's gonna be a nil, then it's set to this. And one simple solution for this is just to clamp the value down. We're gonna go ship spur equals mid. We're gonna use the mid function, um, and it's gonna be between one ship spur and five point nine five. We maybe we don't need it to be nine point nine five. Maybe that's just like me being a bit paranoid. But yeah, like the idea here is that uh, uh, the mid function takes three values just to, I don't know, if, we probably did that before, but just going to <laughs> explain. The mid fun function takes three values and picks the value and returns the value that is the mid value here. Um, so we want the ships per value to be the mid value. Um, but if it, the ships value ever, ever gets, for example, lower than one, then ship spur is no longer in the middle value, and then one becomes the middle value. It's a way to clamp down a value between two extremes. One extreme is one, and the other extreme is 5.9.5. So let's see that, how that works. Yeah, and now we don't have that flickering anymore. The banking is, is nice and smooth. I love the banking happening. It's, it is a bit slow. So it, nice, it would be nice to kind of like have a, the banking speed on a, on a variable. Bank speed. We want to set it to 0 0.1, and then we can plug it in here. So now this 0 0.1 changes how fast the banking is happening. It's cool. I like the smoothness of this animation, but it's just, it's just, let's make it faster. Yeah, like the snappier banking feels better. I know this is not cool. I know this is, is, is you want the, sh the ship to flip um, at the, beginning of the movement you don't want it to flip as it's moving that doesn't that, that, that doesn't feel like the flipping is causing the moving so you want the flipping to be way ahead of the uh, of the flipping and that actually looks really nice i like that i like that that's good okay there's one last thing that i wanted to maybe add but you know what i'm gonna leave it for the doggy zone that's right we're going to the doggy zone mm -hmm. yes so the doggy zone um things are moving well this is good. This feels nice. This feels nice and smooth. I like this. Um, something, there's going to be two challenges for the doggy zones that you want, want to try out. First of all, is now that this, this banking animation works, I want to think about whether we can make it a bit more efficient. So right now, something I don't like, I don't love is, okay, we probably want to keep this mid thing around. That's probably not available, I think. But I don't like how this is like this if statement. Ugh. And I don't like how there is a statement here. Ugh. So can we get rid of those if statements here? Because look at this. This is 16 tokens. This is 20 tokens. This is like 36 tokens. I think we can squeeze it down. Can you come up with a more efficient solution than you know the 26 tokens that we have for those two if statements? And I guess this also is part of it to some extent, right? Another three tokens. So in total, 29 tokens. Can we get it down from 29 tokens to something that is more compact? Maybe a solution without if statements. I have something in mind, but maybe you can come up with your own solutions. Give it a go. The other thing is that we are now kind of like having the, the basics of movement kind of down. This feels nice. This feels good. I like this. So how about we're gonna start adding more of those elements that make you know movement feel nice? Maybe it was gonna be fun to add. Um, there is like if you look at the um, if you look at the mockup, there is like flames coming out of the jet in the back. Maybe we can animate the flames as we did that in um, in the basic shmup tutorial. I want to add this little flourish because I think it adds to the feel of of the of the of the jet. 
Um, so yeah, I think that might be a good challenge for um, like an easy challenge for the doggy zone, like to go through the motions again and adding like an animation flame to the flames. A third challenge, and that is kind of be like we're going to be uh, tough, is we want to start shooting again. That's going to be the big goal, next goal, because you know one of the things is make basic movement feel nice, but also making shooting feel nice. So doing the shooting stuff. Can you do the shooting stuff already? Because that's something we're going to do next. And yes, at the end of every episode, I always say that I always say a big thank you to all of my coffee supporters. Yes, this show is being supported by coffee by beautiful people on coffee who are supporting me every month and, and making this show possible. And you can become one of those people too if you aren't already. You will have access to the next episode, to episode number seven straight away. Check it out, coffee.com slash lazy devs. Yes, yes, yes. So as I said, we are actually like, I had a lot of trepidation about you know the, the first episodes because there's just a lot of stuff happening, but we are getting the swing of things, and I like I'm get I'm reminding myself of you know what it felt like uh, going through testing all this stuff uh, um, myself the first time around. This feels good. This is cool. Next time we're gonna start some shooting. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.